Um, it's 11 o'clock, uh, the 24th of January, in the meeting of the Environmental Commission. Will you do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, roll call. It's taken care of. Okay. And welcome to our newest member, Kim. <laughs> Thank you very much. You want to say anything or whatever? <laughs> well, I, I'm um, privileged and honored to be here. Okay. Thank you for letting me join you. Perfect. Always looking for new people. Good. Um, minutes of the November 22nd meeting, I guess? Yes. Anybody have any additions or corrections to that? Is there a motion to approve? Second. Do you want to be a second? I'll second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Did I send them to you? Um, I had to double check for the, for because the, it was November meeting. I had to go back and get it from a while ago because we didn't we have a, we didn't have a meeting. We in didn't December, have a right? meeting in December. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, I really have no report. We have uh, a meeting tonight for the planning board. Uh, it's there are no applications, but we are going to start to review. When we when we did the uh, the uh, master plan, there was a whole series of items that we really didn't know how to address, and so there's there's got to be like 30, 40, 50 of them that we really are going to start to revisit. And so we're going to start to knock some of those out. So tonight was probably going to review some of those meetings, an easy one maybe, that we would like to recommend change to. But there is no meeting tonight. I mean, no uh, change, applications for review tonight. Uh, I don't have any correspondence. Is there any? Well, I just handed you an Yeah, well, that was for it. All right, we do have an application, I think, that eventually it's going to come in front of the planning board again or else it's already there it was on the la mer la mer's doing some work over there uh i know they did have an application but i don't remember what what exactly they're doing but it's a CAFRA permit to do since it's within the CAFRA zone they have to make application and i'll keep that in mind I don't have any other minutes. Any Thanks. other notices or anything? Anybody else have anything that came across their table? Mr. Yeager is not here. Yeah, Mike said he was not going to be here today. And I guess we're down to new business. Um, I know what you I know what you're talking about. They just they demolished some buildings over there recently. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The, something is being planned, and I asked if there were any um, permit applications submitted. There are just five mature trees that were taken down last week right along the road. Nothing nothing recently in no. front of the planning board. There, I, there's probably something in, in years past. It could be even five, ten years ago that they had approvals and they had extensions on. Mm -hmm. I really don't know anything other than that. With the trees, I would question the Shade Tree Commission. Okay. Find out because five big trees like that w would fall under shade tree. Okay. It should be easy to find on Dodd Avenue. You know, yeah. Bring you a block long drive down there and take a look. I'm not, I don't, to the truth, I, I know there's, what, they're going to put. It's across the street from the application we reviewed in the fall. It's right next to the real estate office. To the, yes, yeah. you can see it. Yeah. You can see it when you're going around the bend. It's the other bend of Yacht Avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly what they had plans there. It was like it was certainly for boat slips and some other stuff. There. Townhouses. Don't remember that honestly. Okay. All right. 
It's been, it's, the application's probably been a while ago. I'm it's sure. Substantial, a long time ago. Yeah. I don't, I don't recall, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask tonight if Just anybody knows. In I'll ask it. tonight around if anybody knows what's going on there. Okay. All right. Uh, and now there's something they want to talk about, the, the Harbor Coast. Anybody want to speak to that? Sure. Go ahead. Um, I know you said, no, you said we have something emailed to us about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I miss the, I guess, the November meeting when it was discussed about the Environmental Commission kind of looking into the concept of the living shoreline, and I don't know if anybody wants to update me a little bit more on really kind of what direction the Environmental Commission was thinking about getting involved, but I can just tell you what, what I know. Um, this goes back to Hurricane Sandy, so that's 10 years ago, that there was erosion that occurred along Delaware Avenue, along the shoreline of the harbor. Um, I mean, it has always happened over the years. If we go back to even the 1960s when they started putting all of the old concrete riprap along the, the harbor there, for shoreline stabilization to kind of protect the road. The thing is that it's also, it's not just the road, but there's a lot of infra infrastructure along Delaware Avenue, sewer lines, water lines, um, that service the Coast Guard base. Um, so when Hurricane Sandy happened and there was erosion and impacts along the, the harbor, Thanks, Mayor. Thanks. Thanks Mayor. Um, so when the erosion happened, um, Delaware Avenue is a county road, so the county got involved um, since, you know, it's a waterway. The Army Corps of Engineers got involved, and interesting, they've been studying it and proposing a project for 10 years now. Um, the funny thing is the original reports say it's emergency remediation, so 10 years Ten worth years of emergency. Um, but they're working on it, and um, they have reached out. There's different project managers that have worked on it. The latest, my point of contact at the Army Corps of Engineers, the project manager is named Joel Dahm, and um, He's been very receptive. I can reach out to him, say, hey, what's, what's the latest? Can you tell me what's going on? Back in February 2020, we hosted at the Nature Center's classroom a stakeholders meeting, um, which had people from the county, the city, the yacht club, the Nature Center, um, all present. They wanted to hear like our thoughts and concerns on the proposed project. Um, the latest was this fall, they did, like early fall, I think around September, they had to do some additional studies. They've gone through a couple of different revisions of the plans, um, and they're still in that revising the plans, getting it to the point they're ready to go out to contractors for bid. I reached out to the county engineer, and he said the earliest that something could be happening would be this fall, more likely to be the winter of 2024, so I take that as, you know. Who's the lead agency? Is it the county? It's, it's actually the Army Corps of Engineers, um, but they have to work along with the county engineer because it's the work is within the right-of-way at Delaware Avenue, and... Um, so they're working in conjunction with the county engineer. Any parts of that road that really are getting close to being? I mean, they, in a little bit? so what they did was they did a quick fix. They, okay. um, where it was actually almost undermining the road, and they went in with a couple of loads of like <clears throat> granite rocks, right. you know, um, rip rack, and just dumped it there to help stabilize it. But part of the the work that's proposed is to actually remove all the concrete that's there along the harbor um, and kind of rebuild the edge. And then 
in front of that new riprap edge, it would be a living shoreline. And I brought an article, it's just a basic um, description about what living shorelines are. Um, you can pass them down that way. Um, so it would be creating habitat. One of the concerns I've had as a, the director at the Nature Center is that we utilize the beach and we also utilize the waterway um, you know, to have access. So the original plan, would there, there's a ramp, there's a pedestrian access ramp there. The plan took away that ramp. And I was like, what are you doing with our ramp? We got approval for that like through Green Acres funding years ago to put that in. And they, so they redesigned the ramp um, to still allow public access to the beach. Um, there actually won't, there may not be a whole lot of beach along the southern side of Delaware Avenue. So we're looking at, I'll just hold this up here, you know, we're looking at the, the strip between almost, there's a Coast Guard maintenance building down the street. Mm -hmm. Um, it's almost from the Fisherman's Memorial to just shy of the, the Yacht Club, mm -hmm. that part of the beach, but mainly the straightaway along Delaware Avenue. That's, that's, that's it's a pretty narrow beach It is as well. But there's a beach there there's at a beach. low tide, and it can be a big <coughs> beach, and yeah. that's where we do our education programs right. for school kids, and you know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to understand, is there going to be a beach or not? Um, there may be on low tide, you know, only. Um, on high tide days, we have to walk the kids down the street anyway to go to the Fisherman's Memorial Beach, but just really trying to understand what the, the habitat will be. And um, so part, part of this whole restoration is rebuild the, the wall, then put salt marsh grasses in front because the grasses actually act as a, um, to kind of soften waves that are coming in before it hits the wall. Um, and then there may be a little, almost like a sandbar kind of area, from what I understand reading the reports. Um, you can go online and look at the Army Corps reports. They're, you know, like 160 pages long. I wasn't gonna print that out for you. But it is public information, and they are working on it. Um, I know this, city engineer has been involved. Um, the last I had reached out to the city, to put, I spoke to the mayor, I'm like, what's the update? And he was just like, I don't think it's a priority for them. But, it, but what I found out is that they're still working on it. It's gonna happen, and it may happen soon. And one of the things that I think might mean that it could happen soon is that um, with the infrastructure funding and the federal level, you know, they're putting into all the road work and everything. Uh -huh. So maybe their funds are out there now to finally actually do the project. Um, what I think the Environmental Commission can get involved with, because I had even asked the question, is there an opportunity to get school students involved in planting the grasses and all of that? And the Army Corps was, well, that's that would be between the contractor. Um, you know, once they approve the, design the project, approve the project, fund the project, it gets awarded to a contractor. Um, so there might be some opportunities for, for us to get involved with students. Um, it also, I see an opportunity for uh, like an, an educational opportunity with signage about what is it, what is it we're looking at, you know, when you go to the edge, because they're they're doing the edge of the harbor and then in towards the wa the water. What happens on the land side along Delaware Avenue right now? There's a grassy strip there. Um, we we have put two benches there, memorial benches. I mean, there's an opportunity to make a nice park along yeah. there. People do love that stretch. They um, will sit there. They, they, you know, there's been events in the past like Harbor Fest and the Dragon Boat races and different things. There's an opportunity to do something nice, 
and to create, um, you know, an educational opportunity with a pathway, with some signage. Um, I mentioned to Justine, I was down at the uh, Chesapeake Bay um, Maritime Museum, or I hmm. forget the name of it. Yeah. It's in St. Michael's. Their, their park, you know, it's kind of a living history thing. And they have a living shoreline there with signs. And um, so there, there's an opportunity, I think, for right now. I'm not sure how we would get involved, but just keep on keeping tabs about the project and if there's a new updated revision, I mean, sort of the time has already passed to make comments on their design. They're into the final design period now. Um, but, and they have chosen the design that, that involves a living shoreline. So they heard, there were other designs that did not have that. And um, so they are going with <coughs> uh, the, in my opinion, the most eco-friendly or, yeah. or progressive um, in terms of creating <coughs> habitat. It's really a nice plan. So that's what I know. And I just, I keep on keeping tabs every now and then. I'll reach out and I'll say, what's the update? What's the update? Because I want to know if it's impacting the use of the harbor and summer camp and school groups and all oh, that. God. More than likely, yeah. the 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 most of the construction work will happen during the winter um so they're not in, and they have rules they can't they can't do it during like summer flounder season and they can't be working in the water during high boat season or or um you know they can't be impacting horseshoe crab mating season and all, all of that i love it so um does, does it could hap it could be happening like next <clears throat> November. Does the Corps keep the mayor in the loop, the city in the loop, or is, or is it more the county in the loop, or, is, or is, you're not sure how that, how um, that works? I know that they've, again, it's a county road, yeah. and it's within county right-of-way, even though there's city lots, that the, the there's actually lots. If you look on a tax map, city lots go out into the harbor. So yes, the city is, is like the, a property owner, mm -hmm. And um, the city gets notices, and I believe they're part of the meetings. Um, I guess I was, the Nature Center Cape May, New Jersey Audubon is just the tenant. So we don't get notification. Um, um, our landlord, the city gets that. Mm -hmm. So I, I've had to keep on like asking lots of questions to get updates, um, but that's, that's what I know. So I suppose that's the only way to try and follow this through is just to keep track of what, tr hopefully, just yeah. keep yours to the ground. And and, yeah, and I got... Can I speak to this, too? Sure, Charlie. Sure, Charlotte. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Hi, Gretchen and all. Thank you so much. Um, but I would plead that if we are the Nature Center, we are a green acre site. And I would think that the state green acres department you know, if Gretchen you could call upon them again to make sure that you do get into the loop. Um, because with this living shoreline, it's extremely important. And I read your amazing article in the Peregrine Observer um, just a few days ago um, when you're discussing the fact that there are horseshoe crab hatchlings. And certainly this has got to be a protected species at this point. So we have an awful lot, I think, to uh, protect us and bring those partners who would help protect us into the conversation in, in a greater way if we possibly can. Um, thank you, thank you for you know, keeping all the pieces together. Um, but having the Army Corps of Engineers be the lead agency, um, I would hope that we would have um, a greater voice. Um, it's, it's just too terribly important um, ecologically. So that's, that's my input. Okay. 
Um, a, a question. Sure. You, you mentioned that there are lots along there. I can only assume that the uh, lots were purchased at, at some time when there was land where the lot was supposed to be and that it has been eroded over time. What would be, the, what is the current status of those lots, uh, do you know? So, um, we have a lease agreement with the city of Cape May to run the nature center. And if our lease agreement, um, if you're on the south side of Delaware Avenue where the nature center building is mm -hmm. and all of that, we have those lots. We also asked to amend our lease agreement to include the lots across the street. Um, where the harbor access ramp is and where some of that grassy area is. Mm -hmm. It's basically a lot that maybe uh, 10 to 20% is on land mm -hmm. and the, the rest is, is into the water. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and so most of those lots are, um, they're still city owned, nothing's built on them. And um, you know, there's, probably riparian rights and waterfront mm -hmm. development issues and There's all private that. owners there too. Uh, that's what I was concerned about. If you do too good a job with this restoration and somebody says, well, now there's land there, I'm going to build my house. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if there's private owners. So how, who owns those buildings there where, where there's maintenance, those garages are? Is that, that's, is the, that the Coast, that's, that's the Coast, Coast Guard. Guard. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the only thing on the other side of the street, I think, is the yacht club. Uh -huh. okay. um, sure. And I, you know, they're not, they're not going to be creating a lot of extra land. Extra land. There will be no yeah. development there. Yeah. There yeah. won't be any development. It'll be tough, yeah. a tough row to hoe, I'm sure. It sounds like what, if, if I have it right in my head, that what's what's there now, the, the grass, then, and then it drops into the water, that they're going to do the nat the uh, living shoreline beyond that, like yeah. where, where the shrubbery is, and then beyond that is where this living shoreline is going to be. So they're not actually going to fill fill any of the harbor they're just gonna no I mean that no. there could be a little bit where where it's gotten really close to the road mm -hmm. they may backfill in there a little bit um, but everything actually happens down over the edge mm -hmm. into the water into the water and on that beach yes. area yeah. kind of uh, a beach restoration mm -hmm. project so nobody's gonna say oh now I have land I'm gonna build a house on it that's no yeah. but the you know the other thing is I think there's there's potential for um, you know a, just a, a very I'm talking to, I'm not talking about major development no. park or anything no. but passive recreation whether mm -hmm. it's just a, a walking path I, I'll admit you know what we do that grassy area yeah we take our lawnmower out and we we <laughs> mow a little strip sure the grass because when we're walking kids down the harbor um, we we don't want them walking through foot high grass mm -hmm. and, and everything and people do walk their dogs there so we want to make sure they're not stepping on things and we kind of do that we simulate a little walking path right. um, and so I think there's some potential for that educational opportunities with signs um, oh sure and uh, yeah, I hear, just to get back what Charlotte said about jumping in and um, on being concerned that the environmental um, resources are protected. The, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, it does have to go through review of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service too. So I think there's multiple levels of review and we just have to keep on asking the questions when there's opportunity to uh, review applications. So it should be at the federal level, the state level, the county level, and the city and level. Um, to make, you guys uh, store kayaks and stuff down there, don't you? I was just so gonna we, say, so people have boats kayaks, there too, yeah. Yeah, kayaks. we, so <coughs> a couple of years ago, we amended our application to give us right to store the kayaks on, on the, beach. the harbor side of the harbor. We could put them all, all along that grassy area if we wanted. We, right now we, there's two things. We have kayak storage for 18 kayaks. 
that people rent the space to put them on the Nature Center property. We decided to keep them on our property just for like security purposes. Um, Aqua Trails, who is our tenant that runs a kayak business, keeps theirs on the harbor side. Um, they really shouldn't be staying there in the winter months, but they are they do have the right to do that. And that is city land, and we have that in our lease agreement would, that allows us. I would like to think that we could, I mean, that's where you have like a little ramp there. And mm -hmm. that, I mean, yeah. that's really ought to be part of the, when they do the whole thing, somehow we ought to really beef that up and make it really, really nice. Well, that's the other thing is, the, um, so, I told you, they took away the ramp, and I was like, ah, you're, right. how are we gonna get <clears throat> kayaks on the harbor? How are we gonna get kids on the harbor? So they redesigned the ramp, and one of the things that I told them about is our ramp right now has a 90 degree angle, which is kind of hard when you're walking down a kayak to, to make that turn. So they are extending it out. It's gonna go up and over the wall. It's gonna actually be a little longer. I've bugged them to please consider the idea of a floating dock. Um, oh, God, that would be nice. But, you know, because now's the opportunity for them no, to be absolutely. exploring I know that. there's an awful lot to put on you guys' mm -hmm. shoulders there, well, but that's I mean, the stuff that we, we ought don't, to have done. Yeah, we don't have the funding for that, but at the first or second Harbor Fest, we had a temporary floating dock there where we were able to bring in one of the pontoon boats and people did tours of the harbor and they were able to connect with... Uh, the other marinas and bring people over. Um, you know, there there is an issue of transient boats. I know we we now have a harbor master for Cape May, um, two voluntary positions. Jack Lord and um, Tom Carroll are serving, trying to trying to deal with abandoned boats and things like that. I mean, there are other features that could be done and. Um, but the first step is to see this this project gets happened and and the living shoreline created. I am still honestly, I am still a little concerned there might not be a lot of beach left. Which you know, that that changes my lesson plans and how does how we do what programs. about where the wider beach is um, farther down by, by the Coast Guard property, closer to the development? That's a much wider beach. The, um, it's hard to the get the kids club? all the way down there. Yeah, yeah by the no, the, no, I'm sorry, the other end. The other end. So, <clears throat> yeah, the, we do. I mean, and we do that. We mm -hmm. take kids to the Fisherman's Memorial when we cannot. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah. When it's high tide, mm -hmm. and it just. And that's why it would be important to have a nice trail. I have a trail. There are yeah. si sidewalks, but even even when you get to the nature center's property, we don't have sidewalks. Right. Kind of end right in front of the first building, and then there's no sidewalk. And then there's nothing. So there, you know, I I wish that the county would kind of look at it as a whole, um, improve sidewalks and access. So I ask a lot of questions. Maybe I could do better in going to every meeting. They do, the Army Corps knows we are a stakeholder and they do reach out to me. I've actually um, had meetings where, I've told them, I've worked there for 25 years. I've, I'm like your eyes. I've seen the harbor change. I know what it's like. So I've had meetings with their engineers and sat down and they were asking me, if, like, well, how's, how has the harbor changed in the last 20 years? And what do you know about this? What do you know about that? So we are involved. Um, and they did select the plan with the Living Shoreline. So. I'm just trying to, I don't know the, the way to go about to really get the foot in the door about the development of that, of the, the ramp and whatnot. Yeah, I I don't know whether it'd be worth it to get the city on notice or the county on notice. Do we want to have this done? I mean, I don't I don't really know the the, the timeline to do that. Whether whether we should wait a little bit, but ultimately it's going to have to be that you know the squeaky wheel there. I'm I'm sure. Actually, the <laughs> the project manager from the core is like, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. You know, he <laughs> he thinks it's great. 
And I, I mean, probably through the city, if we had the administration very supportive of the idea of um, other improvements. Um, Maybe I could sit down with the with Lou, the assistant manager, and just put him on notice that it's, that there's certain things there that we want to get correct or, or push forward. Yeah. And maybe he could just keep that in the back of his mind so whenever he has these meetings, he knows that that has to be brought about. I'd be happy okay. to be available, right. too. Right. Um, I mean, Lou, Lou is, yeah, Lou is pretty attentive. Yeah. <laughs> See you, Lou. <coughs> so I, we'll, we'll, we'll do that, do that down the road for sure. Just for for no reason at all, <coughs> I just want to say I actually read that dog. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the document that you sent, sort of. It's really interesting to go through all of those steps and all of that thought process. <coughs> Never really paid that much attention to it before. It was worth it. Thank you. Well, I know. I the only thing I would say <coughs> I don't know. I mean. <coughs> There's different projects, and the other project the Army Corps of Engineers is working on in the city is the seawall. And it's not, I mean, they probably have a separate project manager working on that. It doesn't mean that, that the seawall would hold back what's happening on the harbor, but I did get a sense from talking to someone in the administration that the city's focus is the seawall. Like, oh, the harbor's gonna happen whenever. But we have another hurricane, or we have another major storm event. There um, goes the road. It's going to be, there goes the road. And it is a county road. Right. So I think they're, so prob maybe that's they're, they're probably just thinking, look, it's the county's focus. It yeah, be I, I agree. Yeah. Well, from an administrative and funding standpoint, the city doesn't need to be as involved. Well, we, we ought to, we, we'll have a, we'll sit, sit down with them and just have an informal, because I think it's, that would be worth its weight. Um, Old business. Um, um, oh. I thought you. Yeah, here. Uh, I have a little one also. Um, after. Go ahead. Randy and I made brochures for the invasives okay. ordinance. So we have a draft. We would like feedback on these. Just pass them over. Um, we did. I did send a draft to the solicitor. He has approved the text, um, so that is fine. But if there's anything that you believe should be added or deleted, please let me know. Um, uh, so at the next meeting, everybody read this and mm -hmm. whatever you bring back any recommendation. Either it's going to float or fly next week, next meeting. So yeah, be ready. Um, also the. The mayor said that he would like to have this added to the water bill mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. every person in every town, household. every house would receive it, and as well as putting it in the various municipal buildings, um, at the Chamber of Commerce, and then... It also should be going to, uh, I'm going to send, uh, make sure that a copy goes to every real estate um, office, right. this, this side of the canal, and they should have they should have multiple copies to give to new homeowners. When they sell a house, this goes along with buying that house. Our landscapers and lawn maintenance people, most of them do not live on this island. They're, so they will not be included in the mailing. I think we're gonna have to go online, find out, there's probably only about 20 or so, and they need to be a direct mail for uh, landscapers and uh, lawn maintenance. Yeah. We've talked about that, I think, since the beginning of this discussion a year ago. Yeah. Looks good. Thanks. Yeah. So, like, so some far. of the choices that I made, for instance, it says landscaping ordinance on the front instead of invasives. That was intentional. I know the actual code is the invasive species ordinance, but, you know, I want people to not fall when they pick there it There they go again, right? That, and that kind of exactly. Thing. And so I thought, well, maybe if it just says landscaping, like it won't be a, like, oh, what kind of rules are they giving us now? But if anyone feels differently and wants to override that preference, that's fine. It was just an idea. I think you're on the right track, but I feel that it opens up so much more we could be doing. 
in terms of landscaping ordinance, when I, again, I drive to work every day past Missouri Avenue where the Fisherman's Memorial is and all those new houses oh, being built God. there, and it's all lawn. <laughs> and I feel right. like we missed our opportunity mm -hmm. because they're just putting in Secret. box houses yeah. and it's just all lawn. And, and I know in Cape May Point they have a landscaping ordinance and in it they it's very clear if you cut down a tree at four inch diameter and even a tree that's only that big you have to replace it of something comparable um, and so there's much more we can do so I don't I don't know maybe this is a start to call it a landscaping ordinance but I feel like okay but there's more work we can do oh yeah and I guess you I mean from that perspective you are right, there are several ordinances that would fall under the more general term of landscaping. Yeah. And I did put the water conservation one on the back, mm -hmm. just as a, you know, people, you know, tack this on, but, okay, so that's a good edit. I'm fine with that. But if, in, if everyone could just, you know, in the next few days, I would like to edit it before next month. Okay. So, so can I, I mean, just as a newbie on the sure. committee, the list of plants came from? The, the ordinance. From the ordinance. Mm -hmm. okay. And so did uh, pretty much all of the text. Okay. Came because from is there, I mean I, I mean, I look at this and I go, yep, 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 all this. <laughs> Do you <laughs> have this on a PDF? Mm -hmm. Can you send it to Charlotte? I already did. did you? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll, <laughs> She's I'll, I did have, send it to I her? Have. I sent it to Charlotte. Yes. Yes. Okay, because otherwise I would scan it and send it off. Or it should be online. But right, I, but there's, there, I mean, there could be well. so many more plants. There are many. Well, you've gone through that issue. Those are the major ones. Okay. <laughs> just, like baby said, the <laughs> no, that's fine. There are more than that. These are the these are the ones. The that, major. The more major ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's what they call the dirty dozen. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. But the ordinance also specific specifies other ones. Um, no. It, no, it doesn't. It's limited. It's, we, mm -hmm. They didn't want to include, you know, all okay. 500. Right. Right. So it was just overwhelming. This was just, so, yeah. There okay. are there are references though for that, but these are the common ones and the dirty dozen as they call yeah. them. Right. I mean, is there? I mean, I so is there an ordinance like the state of New Jersey that has an invasive ordinance or a invasive plant list? Yes, that, there is one. So inside it does reference here, the, in, okay. on <coughs> njforestry.org. Okay. And the um, I can't remember the name. The native, what's the name of the organization? New Jersey Native Plant Task Force. Task Force, but. And there's the, the oral, um, sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, it'll come to me anyway. I'll come. Anyway, please okay. do email feedback. Randy and I did this together. We are not sensitive to suggestions mm -hmm. and changes. We want to get it right. And we have the budget to have these printed, and the city seems to be on board with distribution. So I think it, it has the potential to actually reach quite a number of people. I'm just mulling over that landscaping versus the invasive species mm -hmm. title. Yeah, the, uh, there might be a, I, I agree, I know what you did that, but landscaping, right away it sounds like, well, they're gonna tell me what I have to plant. Well, I think it's, that this is way better than the invasive species part of uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. Well, you've seen the people in, the, what is it, the shout, spout, spout off? Spout off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh the I can't even. I think it's fine, but I'm just saying that, that yeah. We still have some work to do. We just have more to and do. It's a good start. This is mm -hmm. version one, and mm -hmm. um, if this goes to, um, to real estate offices and it goes in the water bill, the the first thing it does is raise awareness, and then all these other things that we still have to do. That, that you know, people I mean, half the people don't know this. It's oh, it's pretty. I'll plant it. Oh, I don't have to take care of it because I'm not here all the time. Why those lawns are down there? Because people don't want to take care of their plant. They just want to have somebody come in and mow the lawn. And we didn't we didn't include bamboo. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, why isn't bamboo on that? Uh, just plain. I think it's own. Yeah, it, I, I think it's its own ordinance. <laughs> it has its own ordinance. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. There is something I think very specific about bamboo. That's I think that was done before. Really? Also, you know, uh, you're, to your point, uh, th that Charles, new does the city have anything specifically about bamboo? Are you aware? They put their 
their automatic sprinkler system on, and it just goes on every day. That's all right, summer rain long. or shine. Yeah, at a hundred dollars a day fine, though, if that were if it were ever enforced, I think mm -hmm. that they would they would toe the line. But it, it's going to have to right. entail some enforcement. Enforcement is a whole other issue. I've right. had people from West Cape Mace tell me that the landscapers all know this. They go ahead, do what they want. They pay the fine and they keep moving on, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't adhere to the to the regulations. So the enforcement and constant monitoring. Mm -hmm. But you can't put that in the brochure. That's something else. That's a new. Well, for thing. this one, I mean, if the landscapers plant one of these and it is not removed, <clears throat> they will incur a fine every day until removal. Oh, there you go. So it's not as if they just pay the fine and leave it there. Right. No, this that, that's no, I, that's not here. That's what have, I've heard about the other regulations, so that's why I'm saying it just has to be monitored and enforced all the time. Mm -hmm. So we find something and we say remove it and then and somebody has to go back and check to make sure that it was removed and that's a whole other process. So <coughs> are these fo images satisfactory? Oh yeah, they're nice. So I think it's great. Okay. Really? Sure. I wanted them to be like easily identifiable. And then um, ornamental oriental bittersweet we probably could Okay. Yeah, I know. Right, we, there's we, no we fruit there. That. We were looking yeah. at that one. Yeah. I know. We were like the strangulation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. that one. That doesn't really suggest what the plant What the looks. leaf, the yeah. foliage right. looks That's like. what it does, but. Okay. Um, okay. When you have a, a second. Go ahead, go ahead, Charlotte. Just a quick um, two also that so the New Jersey Forestry.org, is there information there about alternatives to the invasive? So the first thing I'm gonna think is, well, I can't plant these, but what can I plant? So it's the Native Plant Society, that's what I was trying to think of. That's where they they yeah, have and is there hundreds. Does does that need to be on here somewhere on well, website or something or not? Uh, I know you want feedback later. There's no no, that's but, helpful. I'm just worried about room. Mm -hmm. like yeah, exactly. To on this, I but mean, that's I guess maybe the next step. The water yeah. conservation stuff off and make that a separate. I wonder. Brochure. I wonder yeah. if we. I thought it's a good idea. Leave it. Leave it one top. Or just yeah. I know. If you yeah. had, yeah. If you have, to have this, and then you had like a card uh -huh. inside <coughs> that has um, native suggested suggested. Yeah. Uh, just even a species a, for the Cape Island. And then it's an easy. Well, even under here, list. help protect our community and you go to to do that or something. Like other, even just a website reference mm -hmm. that would bring you to. Or alternative plants, go to. Okay. Right? There are yeah, yeah, I mean, several just, places. It doesn't have to I mean, be there just a, I have to double check. Next deck there, later on. there used to be the list on the New Jersey Audubon website. Okay. Um, Pat Sutton's list, and then my last name used to be Ferranti, <laughs> so <laughs> I used to have a list that was called Ferranti's Favorites, 
and it was like oh what w what was your plant yeah. in Cape May? Instead so you would, you would envision that something like a, a cardboard like the size like an insert size the whole thing and you can just list either that things. or you could or this could be then um, legal size and you just have another panel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is kind of repetitive like mm -hmm. these here and this here. It's, this is just kind of more like everyday language and this is from the actual code from the ordinance. So I could probably use this, this, use this space a little bit more efficiently mm -hmm. um, and make room. Either that or, or don't be afraid of doing a, a four a, panel. A, mm -hmm. a legal size. This, mm -hmm. It's gonna be another thing, the way you fold it. And I agree, you kind of don't wanna to all be don't do this don't do this don't mm -hmm. do this you want to be able to say this is what you should do so you almost have like like the big circle with the, the right. don't it's do no, this and yes. then and then here's a list and you don't necessarily have to have because the list might be a lot more comprehensive you don't have to have pictures for all of them but um Okay, so we can, I can help you with that. List. Another, okay. Will you just send me the Franti's favorites? Yeah. And I can just use okay. that. Yeah. Right. I like the idea of just having another panel so it would be legal size and, right. not, and not letter size. Okay. Because if we you, don't want to confuse. If either. you had the extra panel, you could put um, pictures this size of suggestions. Of the good ones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the list. Mm hmm. Okay. I mean, not That's that probably great. anybody really. Liked I mean, it. here it's saying this, so you could have the um, suggestions and the pictures. So when you, you know, whatever. But it's beautifully yeah. done. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I I do wonder. I'm just wondering about the the water information on the back, and it's it's important. Well, it's <coughs> not the. I mean, but I just wonder if it's not a separate it piece. It could be separate. I just feel like the water situation. We need to just. Every single place, every single conversation. Keep it, keep it, keep that on here and just add on. People for some yeah. well, I'm not arguing with that. I'm not arguing with that part. I'm saying, but if it's part, if we're going to call this landscaping, and I really need more time, I, I don't think well that quickly. If you're going to call this the landscaping ordinance and then on the back um, more information, then maybe you need to say, to put the water conservation, I'm just thinking off the top the of my head, water conservation all, all more prominent. Okay, I'll add the ordinance number. Yeah, well, and was, I'm, they should, they should I'm go out with go every home water and think bill. about this for a couple of days. But I didn't even know this. The I've, been, I've been living here for 30, 40 years. Yeah. And, and I didn't even know any of this information. And right. you know, it should go out with an order bill or something, right? I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that. Some of it is in the summertime, you get some of this information. Water, keep, uh, keep that there, keep it there. Yeah. I, I didn't right, know right. Saturday, Sundays are federal like holidays. It just relates to when do you want it? Yeah, I do like it. Planting, yeah. so oh, yeah, it's this fine. Is important. I'm not saying it shouldn't be there. I'm just wondering that it needs to be um, sure. yeah. part of it. And maybe, you know, um, not just it. on the back, it's almost an afterthought. And if you protect our planet, more information, uh, just say water conservation ordinance. Are you going to put things in the newspaper again this year? I, we have to decide as a commission. Because you've got such a good basis for Yeah. It. Yeah. Right, that's a good point. Why reinvent the wheel? I could just use pieces. Just use pieces of it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'd just like to interject here. Thank you so much, Randy and Justine, for picking up the ball and making progress um, on this particular issue. Also, in terms of the um, educational prong, we have the city website. Yeah. Well, um, just just a thought. No, let's get this get let's get this right. Then we can really this can go a lot of places. Right. Mm -hmm. this okay. Can go a lot right. of places. But the information could go on the city website, and it wouldn't cost anything. Yeah. And if mm -hmm. they were willing to put it on the website, then all you need to do is put the code that takes it to those pages. Mm-hmm. Because when we did the bike map um, and Zach was going to reprint it, 
he added the code to a link on the web page. Okay. We can talk about that later. We can figure that later. Any well, I mean, if Justin's figuring it out, she may as well. well. We could put this. We could put this whole brochure on the website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right, right, open it up right on the website and not have to go even go to a link. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I do too. The other comment I have is the butterflies are eye catching on the cover, but maybe finding a photograph of a landscape oh, with plants that a good landscape. Or the, and I can look for some photos. Maybe some butter, something that butterflies to. go to rather than. Um, and that would flow with the with in an area where the mm -hmm. where the plant where the where your list is going to be. Yeah. Right. That would picture. You want a, good pla plant. a, a plant maybe yeah. with a butterfly on it. That um, pretty, that. whatever it is. You want, mm -hmm. We want people to want to open it. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. And the idea was like people want butterflies. That's what I say. If you find a plant with a water with a butter with, with butterflies, if you plant find a plant with a water with a butterfly sitting on it, yeah, then you've got oh, two things. Those okay, like there's a lot of that, right? Okay. This is great. This is great, yeah. guys. This yeah, it's great. wonderful. So, all constructive, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's why they call it a draft. Yep. It, yeah. It, yeah. I can't imagine there's a landscaper, a professional landscaper anywhere around here who doesn't know how to plant. A, pro a proper landscape with a new house, staying within the ordinances, but they just ignore it. They, you know, That's they, it. They, yeah. You know, but it, no it's it's baby steps. But you know, sooner or later, this gets you get bombarded with this. The, yeah, that's exactly. People are going to notice it. I mean, you've got to notice that's it the right. first time, not the second time. The landscaper might not notice it for the first three or four times, but right. sooner or later. This is going to catch his eye. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's going to be saying, well, this is it. Come on. And we have the opportunity when applications go through planning board review to make comments. And the last couple that I've reviewed, I have kind of and they either all, denied them or made them conditional because of the landscape. And every, every approval was conditioned upon our, our your requests. Yeah. Well, every one of them conditioned that they have to do this or and they all agreed to it up front because it was brought up i mean they're saying yes yes i mean here's the environmental commission's concerned are you going to do this and they say yes and yes so it's pretty clear and plus it actually is in the resolution that that it's a condition upon our review so i mean it's all there we just have to make sure that it has to get enforced has to get enforced i've <laughs> yeah. had yeah. i've had cases this building is one of them um i helped design the gardens in front of the building and suggested native shrubs. And when they did it, they they didn't do it all. They said, oh, well, we couldn't find those. So we <laughs> put hydrangeas in instead. And, but you know. You're just going to have to watch the developments as they get. Right. Um, yeah. What is the situation with code enforcement? So I was on the city's website over the weekend, and there are two code enforcement officials. Their numbers are listed right there. It's like presumably easy for any resident to call, right, if they wanted to. But, like, how often does that happen? How receptive is code enforcement? But the way it's worded, it's saying? only if it impacts the neighboring property. Right, but if someone was to call, like, does code enforcement even know about this? That I mean, maybe we should ask, we should inquire. I know we had on at one time talked about every application even inquiry gets this, every, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a good, a good step. We just, I don't know. <coughs> We've tried an awful lot over the years to, to get it out there. What we, a checklist, this is part of it. I also um, wanted to, and I guess as a commission this year, we can figure out what to do about this, but um, the English ivy is particularly oh, visible God. this time of year, as Randy pointed out, because the other <coughs> is not. I'm just um, and it's good, it's not on competing with multiple, it. not just private residents, like private property, but city-owned properties, mature trees are dying because of English mm -hmm. ivy. 
And IV, like I know this is like, if it's out of control, right? But IV travels underground. So even if you can't visually see the spread of it, it is spreading from what, like mother plants. And if the city isn't gonna take down, <laughs> remove their invasive species from their property, what incentive mm -hmm. does a, a pri private property owner have? I mean, it's the school, the trees on the school property have it. I suppose we could, as a commission, we could just send a letter <coughs> whenever we see something like this. Um, they, I suggest, to Justine's point about code enforcement and how do they know, um, would it be a good idea for a subcommittee of the Environmental Commission to have uh, approval from council to meet with code enforcement officials and give them a private orientation to the types of plants that we cannot tolerate for um, our brochure and within our city limits. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I think. Lou, Lou is the zoning, the head zoning code enforcement officer down there, so uh, that would be, Lou would, Lou is, Lou would be receptive to a meeting. I know he would. Okay, so we're, we're talking about a meeting with an employee who will actually have to go out and check on these particular plants. So at some point, that may have to be one of the steps, um, an educational I get it. Lou, Lou, and, and Jason are the are the two guys down there in control. So I mean, I just think once you get their attention and have that meeting with them, it, it can happen. I think that's a. I th great. While we're at it, then then we have to talk about all the city trees that are covered with ivy. Well, that's that's part of their purview. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's Who is Tim Hughes and William Miller? Don't know. Who are they? They are listed as the code enforcement officers on the city website. Well, they're not in charge. I, I guarantee you that. But they should be, if they are still in those positions, they should be involved in these meetings because they would be the ones actually going out to inspect property. Well, right? I, I, but I, I think Lou and Jason, are, I mean, they're, they're, they're the boss. It's only, they can go to the meeting and have these other guys there too at the same time. I don't, I don't, that's, I don't want to tell them how to do it, but, <clears throat> but I, don't want, I don't think Lou would be happy with just talking to an underling without him knowing what's going on. Oh, I, right. I wasn't implying that. Okay. I just meant that when you search Cape May City Code Enforcement, the two names I mentioned are the ones that come up. All right. So. So who are they? What are they doing? Yeah, yeah. What are they doing? Uh, in old business, still second Ocean Fest. What do you think? Oh. Um, Too soon to tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will report at the okay. next meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll have more answers. Okay. I just have one real quick thing. I wanted to add something. Right. It's, it's very quick. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if all of you got this, but before Charlotte left, she gave me an assignment. I think other people got assignments also, things to do while Charlotte's not here. And she gave me a book called The Beekeeper's Lament, uh, which is a really wonderful book um, about, about the nature of bees, how bees uh, uh, work, what the issues are with their with disease and everything. The book is 10 years old, but it's fascinating. But as I'm reading it, and then she sent me honeybee dish towels for Christmas. <laughs> so I think there's like a gentle hint going on here. Uh, so I talked to her yesterday, and she had asked me about doing uh, some kind of public programs, and Mac is after me to do something about lunch and learn. So I was thinking that... <clears throat> I might get together with the beekeepers in Cape May and work on a, a presentation about um, bees and plants uh, that they like and how to, um, you know, how to plant for bees and how to take care of them, how to be careful, you know, the whole issues. And also and do a little bit more research because this book, as wonderful as it is, is 10 years old. And, and since then, a lot of other, uh, a lot of new developments have come out. So I just wanted to, um, run that bio. I did talk to Charlotte about it yesterday, and, and she thinks it's a good idea. Um, 
and if I should just go ahead and move on that. And I gave lunch to the Lunch and Learn people the very tentative date of September, in September uh, to do a presentation there um, and maybe expand on it from there. Run, so, with, it. Run with it. Wonderful. It's, it's, it's just the brain. best book. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <laughs> And I have B socks now too, so you know I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, I'll go with it, and and I'll keep reporting on you. Yep. There's, um, Anjak is hosting a virtual roundtable tonight. Oh, great. On electric vehicles in New Jersey, so it's all about the EV incentives and programs for infrastructure and municipality, both like private, privately owned EVs and incentives for that. I don't know if anyone can go, wants to go, but just, you know, it's available and we can attend it if we want. On Zoom? Yeah. Here's the information I printed it out. There are some incredible incentives right now through AC Electric and the state for charging ports, too, um, even at dwellings businesses, multifamily dwellings, the cost of them is nearly covered. It's amazing. I'd love to have one at the Nature Center. I'm sorry, I'm kidding. And I've kind of dropped that hint too with the city. I mean, again, the city owns the building, oh. the city facility. I wanna, there it so. is, we're That's just looking at it. At that too. Funding for the no, yep. the one. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, but that's the other side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's two-sided. He has a program for um, commercial, multifamily, and municipal um, reimbursements for the level two chargers right now. Charlotte, you want to talk about your uh, energy master plan? Or you want to wait till the next meeting? Okay, right go ahead, now, go ahead. Because there was a postponement. Um, there was supposed to be some energy master plan by the EPU with um, New Jersey's clean energy program um, for uh, public hearings that were scheduled actually for January 26th, February 16th, 23, March 9th, 23. And all of them have been postponed until um, next year. So um, we have commented in the past on um, the energy master plan for the state of New Jersey, uh, beginning with 2019. And again, we submitted comments um, last year in May. Um, anyway, those, that's just very Anybody else have anything? Please I have please. two things. Um, and I forgot to bring a flyer, but I can email it when I get back. It's starting next Tuesday, New Jersey Audubon has a Gardening for Wildlife webinar series. Tuesday evenings, um, one hour program, eight sessions, followed by three different site visits to different properties throughout the state on just, it's a how to, you know, welcome wildlife into your yard, creating good habitat through landscaping and gardening. So that's happening. Um, also last year, I don't know around what time, but I just missed the boat. There were uh, many grants that become available through ANJAC. And I had wanted to apply for one to renovate the garden in front of the Welcome Center at the Nature Center. I think they're like $1,500 mini grants. And um, we've had our garden there for 15 years. It needs, a, it needs a major makeover. So I'm planning on doing it. 
finding <laughs> some extra support and funding would be great um, to make it happen, but we're gonna do a plant dig, take out plants and um, you know, pot them up, put them aside before we put them back in. Um, so just any ideas or thoughts I would like to apply for that grant, and but deadline, it would be. I don't know. I gotta. I gotta look it all up again. I remember it was probably around this t this time last year, and I just okay. missed the boat. strong master gardener program. I think they are starting that up again. They are starting it up again. So there's lots of hours for them to help you. Yeah, no. I mean, it's weird. I just had this discussion the other day about that because um, they've really changed what can be counted as volunteer. Yeah, and it's. Um, Educational component. Yep, they are, they are starting the um, environmental stewardship program which is like a master gardener uh, series and there's going to be a session on um, pollinator conservation and myself and a colleague from the bird observatory are going to join that session and the breakout sessions and I'm going to be on the session on like gardening and what plants to plant mm -hmm. and Adele will be doing birds and um, hummingbirds and all that. So there's opportunity to get environmental stewards involved. And I think maybe something like, a, you can't get free labor to you know come and weed your garden. But if it's a project like, a, a, like creating a rain garden or creating a, a new um, butterfly garden, I think they could be involved in that. So. Can you give me dates, first of all, for the, for the Audubon, the gardening webinar, and then for this? Yeah, I'll send you that. The okay. Gardening for Wildlife webinar series starts January 31st, and it's eight consecutive um, Tuesday evenings. I think it's 7 to 8 p.m. And if you miss a class, it's recorded, and they'll oh, send cool. it to you. Um, and then what, what was the Pollinator conservation. So that's part of the environmental stewardship program through Rutgers Cooperative Extension. And I right. think the, those classes are starting any time now also. Okay. Um, I, is that the one that I took several years ago that you? You did, you did our pilot program. Pilot we, program. Yeah, we, that was two or three years ago. And we worked with um, homeowners associations and condo associations and um, I think that's when you did it. Yeah. And um, that was like our pilot program and then the last two years we had, we char we charge for this program. It's so like- So what a, is the charge for this? I think it's $125 for the eight week program and three site visits. If you're a volunteer of New Jersey Audubon, you can do it for free. Oh, what a coincidence. So, <laughs> I've been doing that for years. <laughs> and I'll send you the link. I'll, I, when I get back, I'll do that. The mini grant, I know that we would get those notices through ANJAC email lists, but I mean, it doesn't have to be that project. We can go, as in a, a commission, we can apply for um, mini grants for brochures for other things but I know I had talked to you last year that I wanted to do that and I said I would take the lead in putting together the application and I did not do it I didn't get to it if anybody's good at that can help <laughs> anybody else okay motion to adjourn I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. All right, Charlotte. Good talking Thanks. to you. Bye, Charlotte. Bye. Randy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Like
Uh, well, I've been here a long time. We never had a quiet time. This is supposed to be quiet time. I know. We don't get a quiet time anymore. This is just... You think it's... Yeah, it's going to be February. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any big plans for Groundhog's Day? I mean, it sneaked up on me. We this actually, year. Do, <laughs> do you? Have a big <laughs> program. You're 